Approximately 45 minutes into what seemed like a normal spacewalk, astronaut Luca Parmitano pauses. He feels something strange on the back of his neck. It's hard to tell, but it feels like a lot of water. It was a terrifying realization. As he struggled to make his way back into the space station, the water continued to pour into his helmet, covering his eyes and nose. Even worse, the water had shorted out his headset and microphone, cutting off his only method of communication with the people inside the ISS, being completely blinded and cut off from his crewmates. Luca confronted an unthinkable nightmare. He was drowning in space. As the first drops of water entered his helmet, Luca had one question on his mind. Where was this water coming from? In space, water isn't just unusual, it's dangerously out of place. The immediate suspect was the bag that contains an astronaut's drinking water, so he began drinking all of it hoping it would stop entering his helmet. However, despite emptying the bag, the amount of water in the helmet continues to grow. This made it clear that the drinking water wasn't the problem. In fact, when he drank the water that was slowly filling up its helmet, Luca described it as tasting strangely metallic. At this point, there's almost a liter of water built up and because of the way water interacts in space, it starts sticking to his head, making it difficult to see and breathe. Sensing the danger of the situation, the flight director David Kord terminates the spacewalk and Luca is instructed to head back into the space station. Chris, Luca's partner, was told to head back to the airlock as well, but the two had to go in separate directions to avoid tangling their tethers as they were attached to opposite ends of the space station. This was terrifying for Luca as his communication was starting to malfunction and without Chris, he would be completely on his own. As Luca struggled to make his way back to the airlock, the worst thing that could have happened, happened. You see, when the sun sets on earth, the sky slowly starts to change color and fade into darkness. But in space, the process is almost instant. In a matter of seconds, everything around him becomes pitch black. Even with the flashlight, it is nearly impossible to see anything. He stated that he couldn't even see the handles of the ISS he was supposed to be holding onto. The only way he could navigate his way back to the airlock was by relying on the tether and pure memory. I think that for a couple of minutes there, um, maybe more than a couple of minutes, I experienced uh, what it's like to be a goldfish in a fishbowl from the point of view of the, of the goldfish. The water kept trickling until it completely covered my eyes and my nose. It was really hard to see. I, I couldn't hear anything. It was really hard to communicate. Uh, I just I went back using just uh, um, uh, just memory basically. By some miracle, he managed to find his way back to the airlock, but his problems didn't end there. The airlock still had to be pressurized to match the internal pressure of the space station. Normally, this process would be harmless. However, because of the water in Lucas's ears, he began to feel an unbearable pain as his ears struggled to repressurize. He tried to tell his crewmates to slow down the pressurization process, but his communication hardware was still malfunctioning. Seven agonizing minutes later, they were able to repressurize the chamber and Luca could finally remove his helmet. What they found inside was over 1.5 liters of water, an amount that could have easily been deadly if he had not found his way back to the airlock in time. Although the crisis had been averted, one question still remains, how did this happen? The water couldn't have come from the drinking bag as it continued accumulating even after it was empty. The strange taste of the water was also an interesting detail that added to the mystery of the incident. After some more investigation, NASA engineers found the source of the water to be a blockage in the cooling system. Inorganic material had built up over time and had clogged the water separator, causing an overflow into the ventilation system. This led to the water leaking into the helmet. Although this terrifying incident was the result of a technical oversight, it could have easily been prevented. You see, this wasn't the first instance of water leaking into Lucas's helmet. About a week ago, Luca had reported small traces of water in his helmet but they brush it off as just minor spillage from his drinking bag. In the official report by the Mishap Investigation Board, they stated that the occurrence of minor amounts of water in the helmet was normalized. This was a critical mistake as if they had noticed the significance of the issue and the potential danger of the water leakage, this terrifying episode could have easily been avoided. 
Thankfully, due to Lucas's calm demeanor and his excellent memory of the ISS layout, he was able to narrowly escape tragedy. Afterwards, they implemented absorbent padding inside the helmet and a snorkel-like tube in case a water leak ever occurred again. This near-death incident was a wake-up call for NASA. It was a reminder that even the smallest of equipment failures in space can quickly turn deadly.